You know, my outlook is very long term, and 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 the reason I say do not sell your Bitcoin is because if I look back at my life as an investor, the things that I regret are when I found a really good idea and I underinvested in it. Like I, I, you know. Google was a good idea, Facebook was a good idea, Apple was a good idea, Amazon was a good idea. A digital monopoly that changes the world for a billion people is a good idea. And yet, the most common two mistakes after finding a good idea is, first mistake is, someone says something, they talk crap about your idea, there's FUD, oh, Australia's gonna tax Google, or somebody's going to regulate, Amazon's going to get regulated, or something will happen, and so people panic sell. And so whenever there's anxiety in the market and you panic sell, and then you never buy back in, you regret that. And the second thing you always regret is you wish you bought more. And so a lot of people in the world, I mean, they're, they're basically being... Uh, knocked around and traumatized because the media is incentivized to generate a new story every day and if it bleeds it leads and nobody wants to read a story that the risk profile hasn't statistically changed versus last year and there's no reason to read beyond this sentence so normally they always write inflammatory anxiety inducing stories and when people read them and they think about it, it gets them on the skin and they they panic and they do something irrational. Bitcoin represents the dominant digital property network of the 21st century. It's a very simple idea. Take the money you want to give to your grandchildren, convert it to Bitcoin, put it in cold storage and wait. Let the rest of the world do the work and you'll be the beneficiary of all the intelligent people, no matter where they might be in the world, you'll be the beneficiary of all their work with doing nothing else. There's only one mistake you can make. And the mistake you can make is study the world, get anxiety about something going on somewhere in the world, and sell your Bitcoin. So um, I think that the, the common phrase, you do not sell your Bitcoin, is similar to what's written on the back of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is the famous two words from Douglas Adams, don't panic. <laughs> you basically wrote the corporate handbook on adding Bitcoin to your balance sheet and taking that approach. You just borrowed fiat cash against you know, using your Bitcoin as collateral, $205 million to buy more Bitcoin. Is this what all companies should be doing now in, in whatever way they're able to uh, you know, allocate funds in that direction? We want to set an example for corporations. And so Bitcoin is pristine collateral. It's theoretically the ideal collateral against which to take a loan. And so we felt that by us doing this deal with Silvergate Bank, it would, um, it would make other banks either jealous or comfortable. And hopefully we'll see an entire Bitcoin banking uh, sector evolve. And we want to support Silvergate Bank, you know, as they move into this space. I think on the flip side, from the point of view of a Bitcoin holder, there's been this, uh, this meme of, oh, well, I buy some Bitcoin, I wait, and eventually I sell it to buy a Lambo. And I think it's very important for people to know that if you owned a block in Manhattan on Central Park in the year 1900, and if your father, grandfather, grandmother, or great-great-grandmother ever sold that to buy a Lambo, you'd be very angry at them. And if you go back in time and give them advice, you would say, Mom, don't sell the family property. Borrow against the family property to buy the Lambo. And then I will inherit the family property, which will be marked up by a factor of 100. And I can also mortgage it or remortgage it to buy my own. You know, um, my house in Miami Beach is 305 times as expensive as it was in 1930 when it was first sold. I have the bill of sale on my wall. If you back calculate, you conclude that the actual inflation rate of the money supply against scarce desirable assets is 7% a year for 100 years. The government statistic is less than 2%. And so 
you just have to ask yourself the question, do I want to sell something going up in value 7% a year when I could borrow money at 3% a year? And of course, the Bitcoin is more extreme. I mean, Bitcoin is appreciating not because of the rate of currency expansion, but also because of the rate of general mainstream investor adoption, and also because of the increase in technical utility to the things like lightning and the beautiful things that are to be done by Cash App and the like. So, you know, we set up a credit line. Uh, we borrow against it. We do it responsibly. We had $5 billion in collateral. We borrowed $200 million. So it's, I'm not telling people to go out and take a highly leveraged loan. What I am doing, I think, is uh, doing my best to lead the way and to normalize uh, the Bitcoin-backed financing industry. And I think the corporate beneficiaries would be the Bitcoin miners. We're not the only ones with a Silvergate uh, credit line. Marathon did a credit line with Silvergate Bank against their Bitcoin. So I, there's 24 publicly traded Bitcoin miners around now. And so I think there should be dozens and dozens of publicly traded companies that are doing this. I think there are a lot of Bitcoin holders that have always despaired. They'd have to sell their Bitcoin, but they didn't want to. I had many people that are large Bitcoin holders text me and message me after they read about our deal. And they said, can you hook me up with the bank? I want to do the same exact thing. And I was like, no problem. Here you go. And so I think it helps them. I think it also is very helpful in the uh, institutionalization and the maturity of the asset class. Because if you roll the clock back uh, to the 90s, it used to be you see, in Mexico, you couldn't get a mortgage. And you couldn't, you know, I, I hired a bunch of people from Mexico City and they said, you know, Mike, uh, we have to pay cash for a car and we can't get a mortgage. And so no one can buy anything. Yeah. At the point that people started securitizing cars and securitizing houses, and you remember the great American program was Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, and the idea was to make, uh, to make it easy to securitize mortgage so that you could drive down the price of borrowing so that a 23-year-old could buy a house. And I think that uh, Bitcoin as an asset class right, is going to benefit from the same securitization and the same uh, financial development. As people realize they can borrow against something, then they realize they never have to sell it, and then they start to stretch their time horizon from it's a 36-month speculation to it's a 36-year holding. I really want people to think of it as the family farm. I'm living on this beautiful farm because my grandfather or my great-great-grandmother came here and said, this is where we should make a life. I'm not selling it, right? This is, this is my vehicle uh, to achieve my goals and my children's goals.